In this tutorial, we're going to use QGIS version 3.2.3 and kernel density estimation to map a continuous surface from a point distribution. Our point pattern is a layer with 42 points, each representing a biting fly trap location on a study ranch, indicated by the polygon boundary. At each trap location, we have a catch per unit effort value indicating the number of biting flies captured per decimal hour, illustrated here by a red graduated symbol. Our goal with kernel density estimation is to convert this point distribution, which is discrete, into a continuous surface to map the concentration or distribution of those CPUE values across this landscape. There are two ways to launch kernel density estimation in QGIS version 3.2. First, you can launch the kernel density estimation tool uh, under raster creation tools in the Saga toolbox. You can also launch the heat map tool found under the interpolation tools in the processing toolbox. Let's use the kernel density estimation toolbox to populate the parameters for our kernel density estimation of the CPUE values. Let's look at the individual parameters that we'll need to run this analysis successfully. First, we need our point file. This is going to be our TRAPS CPUE. Second, we're going to need a weight, or the CPUE value itself. That's the number of biting flies per effort time at each of the 42 locations. Next, we're going to need to select a radius, and we'll have to pause on the tool here to talk about this for just a moment. The radius is going to be equal to the bandwidth, or how far we're going to search around each of our points to calculate the kernel density estimate. There are a variety of ways to calculate this, but for this example, I'm going to use one metric presented by Fotheringham and others called the HOPT method. This method takes advantages of two pieces of information that you already have. First, the sample size, 42, the number of traps that have CPUE values during this sampling period. Second is a measure of dispersion, or the standard distance, which is the measure of dispersion of the CPUEs around the weighted mean center. There are other videos on the Sierra Lab YouTube channel that describe each the descriptive statistics that include standard distance and also the difference between unweighted and weighted means. Here I have a LibreOffice Calc spreadsheet editor open that already has the calculation performed for us. You can see that it includes the sample size, the standard distance, and that goes into an equation that calculates HOPT. These values, 3475.19 and 1233.51, are in map units, which in this study site are in UTM or meters. So my optimal H value, or bandwidth, which also equates to the radius in the kernel density estimation dialog box, is going to be equal to 1233.5 meters. Or for this experiment, we'll round up and call it 1234. 1,234 meters. For those that are interested, HOPT is equal to 2 over 3N. That division is then raised to the 1 4th power times sigma. And here, sigma is equal to the standard distance in map units, and N is equal to the number of trap sites in our point file. Now we can populate our radius at 1,234 meters using the HAP calculation we just performed. We're going to leave our kernel set at the quartic kernel, which is the default in QGIS. It's also the default in ArcGIS, and it's the most commonly used kernel for heat mapping. We can also set an output extent or limit the reach of this kernel density estimation by some parameter. And for us, we're going to use a specific layer which is the boundary of our study area. The next thing we're going to do is populate a cell size. The cell size is going to be the size of the raster surface that's used to convert our landscape from a discrete point distribution into a continuous surface 
that we can populate with those density estimates. Remember the density is going to be equal to the number of flies per unit area and that area is going to come from the cell size and we're going to set this at 100 meters. We also need to save this file. So I'm going to navigate to a location. Here I have a raster folder. Create a new folder, kernel density estimation. And I'm going to name this KDE CPUE1. And I can run this. When this runs successfully, I'm going to get a raster file that's now loaded in my map window that has an extent equal to the ranch and it's going to have a default black to white color ramp. For this tutorial, I'm going to select the symbology and I'm going to switch from single gray to single band pseudo color. I'm going to leave it as default this light red to dark red and I'm going to go ahead leave this at continuous and apply so we can see the map and talk about it briefly. I'm also going to move my ranch boundary up above the kernel so I can see the outline of my steady area against this kernel density surface. Now we have a continuous surface that describes the distribution of biting flies rather than our discrete point file. So now we have this raster image that describes for us the density across the landscape rather than just those 42 individual locations. Interpreting this map, we can see that during this trapping period, we had an intense amount of flies collected here in these darker red areas and fewer to no flies collected over here in the western side of the ranch. So we can see we had a high concentration of flies here in this region. In future videos, we'll talk about how to move from measuring concentration, which we've done here, to actually measuring statistically significant clustering using a series of local clustering techniques. Good luck with your kernel density estimation.